welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway. I'm author of a book called On This Day in Tudor History, a book which has served as an inspiration for these daily videos that I'm doing sharing Tudor events like births, deaths, marriages, baptisms, coronations, battles, you name it, uh, every day of 2019. Now today's video is based on an article that I wrote a few years ago for Tudor Society members um, on the acts of uniformity and supremacy. For it was on this day in Tudor history, the 8th of May 1559, that Queen Elizabeth I gave her approval, um, her royal assent, and this was just under six months into her accession, uh, she gave her approval to these acts which had been passed by her parliament on the 29th of April 1559. Now the act of uniformity is very, very important in English history because it made Protestantism, that Protestant flavour of Christianity, if we can use the word flavour, um, as England's official faith. It established a form of worship which is still used in parish churches in England today. And this act also showed the English people that Elizabeth was really bent on following a middle road as far as religion was concerned. She wasn't extreme either way, she wanted this middle road. Um, it also made the monarch head of the church once again, because of course in King Henry VIII's reign, the uh, monarch had become the supreme head of the church in England. But that had been undone by Mary I during her reign. She'd wanted to reunite uh, the English church back with Rome. So now Elizabeth is overturning Mary's religious measures and going back to where her father and her half-brother Edward were. Now Elizabeth I was a keen Protestant. She'd been influenced um, in her faith by her stepmother, Queen Catherine Parr, who was a very zealous uh, reformer. Um, and Catherine was Elizabeth's stepmother during Elizabeth's formative years in the 1540s. And Elizabeth had joined Catherine's household for a time um, after King Henry VIII's death and when Catherine had married Thomas Seymour. But Elizabeth was, she was Protestant, but she was no Calvinist, she was no Puritan. Uh, she hadn't gone sort of that far, that sort of extreme in her views. And she was actually against clerical marriage. She had seen the religious divisions, the damage that had been done, uh, what, she, what she thought was damage and divisions, uh, to the country in her half-sister's uh, reign. And she really wanted to bring peace and tolerance to the country once more. So although she herself had a Protestant faith, she was very aware that not everybody shared her kind of faith. And she wanted to create this religious settlement that Protestants and Catholics would be able to understand, could live with, would be happy with. A kind of halfway house, a middle of the road, uh, just that would allow her, her population, her people, to live in harmony with each other no matter what their faith, but that would also, also restore Protestantism to the country as the country's official faith, and that would also restore her royal supremacy so that she could be head of the church. Elizabeth declared, the bells are ringing out for Elizabeth, thank you. Elizabeth had declared that she had no desire to make windows into men's souls. And so she's saying there that what you believe is personal to you and I don't want to get involved. I don't want to prescribe what's in your heart. And she believed that there is only one Christ, Jesus, one faith, all else is dispute over trifles. 
So as long as you believe in Christ, the Saviour, as long as Jesus is at the heart of your faith, whether you're Catholic, Protestant, in between, whatever, and whatever flavour of Catholicism and Protestantism you are, it's all trifles, it doesn't matter. And her religious settlement was a, a way of showing how, how she viewed that, what she felt about it. But, of course, Calvinists and Catholics criticised the act. They didn't think that it went far enough in each of their directions. But Elizabeth knew the importance of stability, peace and tolerance. And she felt that this religious settlement uh, could bring that stability to the country. So what did Elizabeth's middle-of-the-road uh, religious settlement actually consist of? But it's, it's rather long, but I'll, I'll tell you its key points. It um, made Mary I's repeal of Edward VI's uh, religious measures, his, the, her repeal of his Act for Uniformity and the administration of the sacraments, null and void. So she was undoing what her her half sister had done her act of uniformity reinstated the use of the english book of common prayer which was from 1552 and all services were to follow that format the order of service set out in that book and all services were to be in the language of english and not latin the act made elizabeth supreme head of the church again the Catholic Mass was banned. Everybody was to attend church on Sundays and holy days or they would be fined. So she was making religion important. Uh, you'd be fined 12 pence if you didn't attend. There were measurements or punishments for members of the clergy who didn't stick to the act and who didn't use the Book of Common Prayer. And regarding church ornaments, the Act stated that such ornaments of the church and of the ministers thereof shall be retained and be in use as was in the Church of England by authority of Parliament in the second year of the reign of King Edward VI. So going back to her half-brother's reign and the religious measures uh, concerning these church ornaments. Now, the Act is very complex and there's a lot more in it than I've just sort of gone through there, so I'll give you a link to read it for yourself. Now, although many people see Elizabeth I's religious settlement as too middle of the road um, and a sign that Elizabeth I wasn't a keen Protestant, that her, her religious faith was was weak and that she wasn't a strong evangelical. I think that, and this is my personal view, I think that Elizabeth felt that she had to put her faith to one side for a minute, her feelings over her faith to one side, and to act in the best interests of her country and her people. She viewed Mary the First's reign as incredibly divisive. Um, you had the Marian persecutions, of course, and the way that England had sort of bounced from Protestantism to Catholicism and all the unrest and trouble and divisions that that, that had all caused, the instability. Um, she felt that she had to put her faith to one side and act to make England stable once more. She had to deal with all this. Obviously, later on in her reign, Elizabeth couldn't be this middle-of-the-road person that didn't want to look, make windows into people's souls. She ended up being excommunicated by the Pope, and the Pope ended up sort of giving uh, Catholics uh, permission and actually urging them, encouraging them to rise up against their Queen because he viewed her as a usurper and not the right person on the throne. And that made Catholics a threat to Elizabeth. It put them in a very difficult position, as I've sort of explained um, before. And so Elizabeth was forced, really, later on in her reign, into 
into taking action against Catholics. Um, and because she was dealing with plots by certain Catholics, she was dealing with um, an imminent Spanish invasion with the Spanish Armada. But that was later on. We're talking about the start of her reign now. And her, the start of her reign was marked by her feelings of wanting moderation, peace and tolerance. If only she'd been able to continue in that way, if only we didn't have the later persecutions of her reign, because uh, her reign was far from a golden age for Catholics towards the end of her reign. So that was our On This Day in Tudor History event for today, the 8th of May, 1559, where um, she gave her royal assent and approval to the Acts of Uniformity and Supremacy. You can subscribe to the channel by just clicking round about there, uh, hit the bell to be notified, but uh, just know that I will be back tomorrow with another Tudor um, event, uh, Tudor goodie for you. See you then. Bye-bye.